Hello, everybody. Konnichiwa, minaboku wa Jeremy desu. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. And this is another Eurovision reaction video, this time a little bit shorter than some of the other ones that I've done before, um, mainly because we have four brand new songs um, officially released uh, to be the representatives of their countries. So we have Australia, Finland, San Marino, and... Um, Netherlands. <laughs> Took me a second there. But there's a fifth song that I also want to talk about because it could be a huge game changer in my opinion. As usual, these are my opinions and not necessarily indicative of what the rest of Europe thinks because I tend to be a lone warrior when it comes to some of the opinions and stuff. Like, I really, 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 really wanted Leslie Roy to win in 2021 with maps, but I understand why she didn't. But anyway, going by the song and the and performances and all these other things. I also didn't think that Ukraine song was that strong last year, but that's just me. Anyway, okay. So opinions, opinions, that's what these are all about. Let's get started here. And um the first one I want to talk about is uh, actually Australia's song. It is called Promise by Voyager. Now, it's an interesting song. I'm not a big rock fan. I've said that before. Uh, their vocals are interesting. Until it gets to this part right here. I could do without that. I don't like screamo, heavy metal, grunge, whatever. Like, I mean, at least it's visually interesting. This is the music video. It's not the live performance, of course. Um, but being a generic rock band look... Um, and the song is kind of, it, it, it stops short of just being generic because of the fact that there's all these interesting elements like 80s sound. There's a solo here coming up with the guitar, electric guitar. That sounds really neat. It's like the sound of neon. I don't know how else to explain it. Like, you know, usually when you hear neon signs, it's like, zzz, but obviously like this isn't like that. It's just like a neon sound. So you've got the keyboard, you've got the the rock band or the guitar. I don't know. I I like that element of it, I suppose, but it's just, in general, not my favorite thing um, of the current songs that are being put out. And uh, we've seen, obviously, that's Australia's this year. I will give them a kudos for the fact that they're sending something different. And as we've seen before, um, usually any countries that try to emulate what won the year before don't necessarily win. Uh, since 2017, even before that, we've had uh, different genres of winners each year. So 2017 was a really, really slow song for Portugal that was really boring in my opinion, but still won. 2018, we had Israel with Toy by Neta, which was the song that got me interested in Eurovision. Um, then 2019 lowered the, t the speed again, and we went to a ballad that blew up all over the world. Um, by Duncan Lawrence with Arcade for Netherlands. 2020 contest was cancelled, but in my opinion, I would have gone with either Cleopatra by, if, by Effendi or Uno by Little Big to be the winner for that year. 2021, of course, was um, Maniskin for Italy, a rock song. It's been a while since a rock band won, and again, not my particular forte, but I see why they won. Damiano was all over the stage interacting. They put on a great performance. Australia could do that if these guys do it right, but in here they're just kind of like staying within their little group. So it'll be interesting to see how it translates on stage. Uh, and 2022, of course, was Ukraine with Stefania, kind of a folk song. So um, I don't know, like this song is different, obviously. A rock song won two years ago, so will it happen again this year? I don't know. I, I don't... Australia is doing it right in their they're sending different styles of music each year because Sheldon Riley last year did like a ballady style song operatic voices it was a it was a very showman style song and it was amazing I don't think Australia sent a rock band yet still my favorite Australian song is 2016's uh, Sound of Silence by Dami Im amazing amazing beautiful song anyways uh, moving on from um, the Australian song. Let's go over to San Marino. Oops, just one second here because I have to change my window here. Oh, there we go. San Marino. Okay, is that right? Done. Yes. Okay, where are we here? San Marino. Peaked Jacks like an animal. Now, 
This song here, a lot of people give flack to Ireland for generic sounding song, but this one is more generic in my opinion. Um, I mean, it's a, it's, it's different. Uh, he's having fun singing and he's right up at the front of the stage and stuff. But again, it's another generic rock band song. It's not even really rock. Like it's rock, but it's, I don't know what else you'd call it. Disco rock, maybe. I just, I can't see this making it into the top 10. So I, it's just, I don't know. Like, what do you guys think? It's, it's very psychedelic. It's very colorful. Um, and that's about all I could really say for it. <laughs> I like Ireland's better. Um, there's something about the lead singer from Ireland's band. His voice is very much like Damiano from Maniskin, but toned down just a little bit. Um, this is, it's another like party rock anthem here. So there's a lot of them this year and it's, it's kind of strange to me because the last couple of years I've watched, there hasn't been a lot of like bands. But they're making a, a comeback, that's for sure. A definite resurgence. And is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I don't know. <laughs> We're going to see how it translates this year. Um, it didn't work so well last year. I mean, uh, who made it into the grand final? Finland did. And uh, with Ras... 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 Moon? Oh my gosh, I can't... Th Mas Rasmussen. There we go. I want to say Rasputin, but no, Rasmussen. Um, and that wasn't my personal favorite. I liked Ready the best last year. But and, but I still think that uh, of all of them, even though I wasn't a fan of the song or the performance, Akile did the best in terms of the rock band performances. Like He used everything. It was a show. And I can appreciate that. So, so San Marino... Um, I don't know what to say. I mean, my favorite from San Marino is still Adrenalina by Senhit and uh, Florida, Florida. So, okay, uh, let's move over to my least favorite song of the four that uh, have been released. Um, I am definitely in the minority on this in, in some cases, at least on the Wee Wee Blogs uh, poll because of the fact that they people want this one to win Eurovision currently. I don't like this song. It's, I don't know. Like, early on in the song, he does this weird thing with his tongue. I'm like, what are you doing? And what's with that hairstyle, too? Like, the aesthetic is weird. The green is nice. I love green. It's my favorite color. Um, camera angles are not extremely flattering. He's got the open chest thing, which is great. Like, he's definitely standing out. But what's with this? What's with the tongue thing? That's, like, just creepy and weird and... Finland has a history of sending a lot of rock songs and sometimes pop songs as well too. This is like a marriage of the two, which I suppose is kind of what I've been wanting for a while, but I don't know if I wanted this. It's like a case of beware of or be careful what you wish for. Um, it's not it's not great. Uh, <laughs> but it's definitely a standout and I do I, I could see it being a top 10. Um, this one in Croatia probably are the two that stand out the most, in my opinion, of the ones released so far. Uh, visually, um, and the songs are kind of weak. This one's a little bit stronger than Croatia's in terms of the song. It's all over the place. It's very chaotic. And usually I really like chaotic stuff because it's, it's just, it's my vibe. <laughs> but there's just something about this song that I don't like. It, it's, it's annoying. And it might grow on me eventually. Sometimes they do. But I don't really care for it that much. So of the four that have been released so far recently, this is the weakest one for me. Just just saying in general, I, I don't know. It's it's okay. It, it's it's fine. It's just not my forte. Okay. Um let's head over to the Netherlands. Now, Duncan Lawrence who performed Arcade, of course. Uh, he had a hand in writing this song or producing it, I believe. And we have Mia Nikolai and Dion Cooper. It's called Burning Daylight. And I'm a little I'm a little confused on the story here in the music video because we've got the guy who falls down. Now he's a girl. Is it a parallel story of their lives being similar? Are they lovers? Is it like a transgender sort of thing? Like it's the same person. So she goes through the window, runs over, goes through the thing. He becomes him. They meet up. Is it is it their inner self and then becoming one? Like then they go on stage 
and they're performing, but they're showing solo, like you don't see them together. You kind of see them solo, like they're both on stage performing. So I don't know, like, is it meant to be a personality thing, a transgender thing? Is it just their, 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 like, their lives are parallel? Like, what is it? <laughs> What's going on? It'll be interesting to see how this pans out on stage as well. And I got to shout or call out myself on something here because I realized this. I say interesting a lot. That's interesting. This is interesting. It's interesting, isn't it? So you should play a drinking game or maybe not because you might get alcohol poisoning if you drink every single time I say it's interesting, blah, 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 because I do. And it's, it's unconsciously, subconsciously, I don't mean to do it. So I'm sorry. I apologize that I, I need other words to describe things. So I'm calling myself out right now for it. I'm going to try to do better. <laughs> but if I don't, I'm so sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the song that I want to talk about that is not officially chosen yet at the time of this recording, I have every hope and every belief that this song will be chosen to represent Sweden. Because she represented Sweden in 2012 and won back then with the song Euphoria, which for 10 years was the song, the favorite song of people in most of the Eurovision votes. Until this year when Slow Mo by Chanel toppled Euphoria as fan favorite song of all time. But Tattoo by Laureen is stunning she is a performance artist not just a singer and i live for that i am the same way i love doing the performance side of things i love lady gaga i love Cher, um ayumi hamasaki uh celine to a certain extent but like those three that i mentioned are such consummate stage performers like they it's 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 visually stunning and loreen is right there this song, Tattoo, is absolutely, it sends chills down my spine, makes me tear up. Her emotional performance is amazing. Like, this is a winner. If she gets chosen, this is going to be a game changer. I do think that she could easily win Eurovision, the strongest entry of all of them. And yes, I love Alessandra, Norway, uh, Queen of Kings, absolutely. But at the same time, I think that Loreen would overtake. And for my personal, like, top three, um, Loreen would be first with Tattoo currently, followed by Alessandra with Queen of Kings, and then Croatia, not Croatia, sorry, um, Czech Republic, not Czechoslovakia, Czech Republic, I'm sorry, Czechia, um, with My Sister's Crown by Vesna would be my third. Now, if Patty Gertie gets chosen for Germany, Germany, do the right thing. Bring in Patty Gertie. Don't bring in that horrible mess that was voted on TikTok, Lord something or other. No, don't. Do the right thing. Bring Patty Gertie in. She deserves it. Then that would be my top four right there. Uh, currently, Tattoo by Loreen um, for Sweden. And then Queen of Kings by Alessandra for Norway. Third would be My Sister's Crown by Vesna for Czech Republic. And fourth would be Patty Gertie for Germany. So assuming she gets chosen for Germany. So in about two weeks, roughly, we should know all of the songs. We're over halfway there now. And, uh, it's exciting. I'm, I'm very, very excited for all of this. And, uh, here is to more Eurovision reactions. I want to hear from you guys too. Please comment down below what you guys think of these songs and uh, let's have a conversation. Conversations are great and uh, I will see you with another reaction video. I'm sure probably next week after we get more stuff past this weekend. All right. Thank you very much. Jamathane Mina and uh, have a wonderful, wonderful day.